A bomb attack in the hometown of Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte is proving his biggest challenge since taking office in June. At least 14 people were killed and dozens more injured in the explosion at a busy night market in Davao City on Friday. The Islamist militant group Abu Sayyaf claimed that its sympathizers were behind the attack, calling it an act of retaliation for recent military operations to hunt down the group. But I am inviting now the armed forces of the Philippines, the military and the police to run the country in accordance with my specifications. Duterte declared a nationwide state of lawlessness after an Abu Sayyaf spokesman warned of more attacks. The president's declaration is a step short of imposing a state of martial law. It allows military forces to support police operations in setting up checkpoints or carrying out searches. The Abu Sayyaf group has earned a reputation as a kidnapping gang. This year it beheaded two Canadians after ransom demands for millions of dollars were not met. An Abu Sayyaf spokesman said the group's supporters wouldn't stop until Duterte converts to Islam and adopts Islamic laws. But some people worry that the declaration of a state of lawlessness could enable Duterte to intensify his violent campaign against suspected drug dealers. His so-called war on drugs has killed more than 2,000 people in two months, and his short tenure is already proving controversial. Duterte's recent plan to move the remains of former dictator Ferdinand Marcos to the National Cemetery for Heroes in Manila later this month has set off a firestorm of opposition. The uh, proclamation of martial law is not a military takeover. The Marcos regime killed, jailed or tortured over 100,000 people before he was ousted by a popular uprising in 1986. Historians estimate that he plundered $10 billion in state funds. The country's Supreme Court is looking into the president's plan after it was challenged.